Hello and welcome everybody. I know some of you are waiting for the sensor tutorial, a video in which I explain every intel and counterintelligence unit in this game. But before doing that, I would like to talk about the T2 radar. The T2 radar is kind of a forgotten unit in this game. Most players see the benefit in T1 radar, which is that all the units whose gun range is higher than their vision range can shoot at their gun range instead of just the vision range. And most people also see the benefit in T3 radar. T3 radar is going to provide the highest radar coverage in the game and it has this inner ring that even detects units that are stealthed, the Omni sensor. So it is a pretty good unit. But people tend to forget about the T2 radar which is in between. And most people kind of skip the T2 radar and just go from T1 radar straight to T3 radar. And I made this video to tell you why this is usually a bad idea. So there are at least six reasons why T2 radar is awesome. Let's start with reason one. It is very easy to get. So by the time you have a single T2 power generator, you can also just get two T2 power generators, right? Economically speaking, it should not be a problem. And by the time you can afford one, you can also afford two. And the opportunity cost is pretty much having one T2 makes less. But a little more map control than your opponent is going to make uh, up for that. So getting two T2 power generators is going to be fine. You can just always build two, and this is going to give you lots of options. So with two T2 power generators, you can usually get two out of the following. Assisted T2 air production. T3 land, be it the Finnish factory that's already building units or the T2 factory that is upgrading to T3 with uh, some assistance, right? Or an ACU HP upgrade like the second shield for Aeon or the first Nama for Seraphim or the first shield for UEF, right? And a couple of mobile shields, for example, or deceivers for Cybran. Next on the list would be the T2 radar. Maybe some shield to defend it, and a couple more shields for your army. Seraphim would get extra ACU upgrades, or more expensive and better ACU upgrades. And Cybern would get a couple of deceivers, and possibly an ED1 shield, for example. Right? And you also have the option to upcycle your T1 power into your economy. And this is how you get the more cost-effective T2 power. So these are the options you get when you build T2 power generators and with two T2 power generators you're going to have two out of these options at the same time, right? So this is a pretty flexible setup usually. And you could see how T2 radar was part of a list of pretty handy things. So it cannot be that bad, right? And the cost is actually justifying this too, because in mass cost a T2 radar is about as expensive as two T1 radars. And two T1 radars are of course not as good as one T2 radar. Reason number two why you should love T2 radar is the extent of its coverage. So T2 radar is always going to cover a large area beyond your portion of map control. So if you place a T1 radar here, you would only see a small portion of the enemy territory and you would have to conquer this side of the map in order to cover the other portion of the enemy territory with T1 radar. But T2 radar is going to allow you to cover a portion you do not control. So this is quite good. On small maps it is going to cover the entire enemy base like on this one and on larger maps you can still cover a good portion of the enemy base depending on the spot and the position, right? So let's say you are playing a team game on Wonder and you are on a mid slot, front slot and you're building a T2 radar there. Then you're going to see parts of the flank player's base and the two bases of the enemy mid players usually. So this is also very good coverage. The least it does is function as an early warning system. So let's say we are considering land fights. Then the T2 radar is going to help you to avoid defeat and detail situations 
or like being the victim of defeat in detail situations. Right here we have a UEF army against us and we can retreat these units a little bit and send these units to the left side and this is how we can make sure that we can challenge the opponent's army with an equal force rather than having our two groups of units spread out, right? So this is handy. And of course T2 radar also interacts with air. So T2 radar actually allows you to spot and intercept enemy bombers before they drop a bomb. And you can also shoot down enemy transports before they drop the units and enemy gunships before they start shooting. And this is an advantage that T1 radar is realistically not always going to provide. Right? Because you simply have more time to detect the incoming units and your own units that are reacting have more time to travel in the respective location. So very good coverage. Reason number three why T2 radar is great is that it doesn't die as easily as T1 radar. So when the opponent builds T1 radar, you should always send T1 bombers at their T1 radars. And usually the opponent is going to know that you can destroy the T1 radar easily, which is why they build multiple T1 radars. So if they lose one, they don't lose the coverage and they can rebuild the lost radar before the other is killed ideally right this is kind of the idea so t1 radars are usually extremely vulnerable structures and economically speaking it is usually worth it to attack them with t1 bombers because the cost of a t1 bomber in mass is very similar to the cost of a t1 radar in mass and the radar is going to receive overkill damage from the bomb, so it's not going to leave any wreckage behind. And this is why the attacker doesn't really have anything to lose, and attacking T1 radars with T1 bombers is always fine. Plus, there is the chance that the enemy doesn't rebuild their radars, or rebuild them too late, and the attacker can exploit this crucial time frame where the opponent doesn't have intel coverage, to attack. And of course the bomber is also going to get the chance to make a second pass and drop another bomb on something else. And this is why bombing T1 radars is always a good idea. But T2 radars are different. So T2 radars come with this extra range and this is giving you time to react to incoming T1 bombers before they drop a bomb. And usually in the stage where you can afford T2 radar, you can also afford some defenses for it. So again, T2 radar doesn't die as easily as T1 radar. And this is why you should prefer it. So reason number four why T2 radar is great is that it is quite easy to protect, even if you do not have the greatest map awareness to protect it without the shield. By the time you have T2 power, it is usually the time where you get T2 radar and usually also the time where you get mobile or stationary shields. So Siren can get cheap ED1 shields, UEF and Aeon can get mobile shields, which are also going to be cheap, plus they move, right? So really great units. And these are very inexpensive. So a T2 radar and the cheapest shield Aeon, UEF and Siren have to offer it's going to be about the mass cost of 41 radars, so quite inexpensive considering the survivability that this shield adds is going to be much higher than the uh, survivability of 41 radars, right? Plus you also get the other advantages, right? I don't have to repeat. It is better than building multiple T1 radars, have them bomb and rebuild them, and of course your T2 radar is always going to be upgradable to Omni when you need it, and the extra protection is going to make sure that it won't die once it's an Omni and it's going to be an even better deal to attack it, economically speaking. You can wall T2 radar at the Shield Dome's border, as I did here, right? And this is not perfect, it is not about beauty here, it is just about kinda making sure 
that enemy units that try to attack your radar cannot attack it without either shooting down the shield dome first or killing the walls, right? And this is how this is supposed to work. So you could make a template for these wall segments and place them in a way that your faction's shield is going to cover uh, the T2 radar and uh, this ring inside, right? This will be ideal to give you extra time to react against land units that try to kill your T2 radar. The only exception to this uh, cost consideration of protecting T2 radar is uh, Seraphim. So the T2 stationary Seraphim shield is too expensive for a T2 radar alone. You would try to protect more than just the T2 radar for the cost uh, of the T2 stationary shield, right? This is why you usually don't defend a T2 radar with a T2 stationary shield if you play Seraphim. And instead, uh, you would probably rely on the alternatives in Intel Seraphim offer. So Seraphim have these uh, cloakable land scouts you can deploy anywhere on the map and they're going to provide constant radar and vision. And the Seraphim air scouts are streamable just like the scouts of any other faction and they provide these handy after images that uh, other factions do not have. So Seraphim is kind of maybe not always uh, going to rely on T2 radar but they have their alternatives, right? Seraphim can still economically viably include the T2 radar uh, into a like fire-based sort of portion of the map that is intended to provide as an ACU retreat for their combat ACU and a TML forward base position, right? So if the Seraphim player is going to have a TML like tactic missile launcher at the front trying to hit the opponent's T2 Maxes and T2 power generators and factories, then it is going to be viable to use a T2 stationary shield to defend this TML, a couple of T2 PDs, possibly a TMD, a TMD, and this T2 radar, right? And then it's going to be worth it. So for Seraphim, whether you should get T2 radar is a little bit playstyle dependent, but usually it's, it's still a good idea, right? Because... Uh, Seraphim very much synergizes with this ACU retreat TML sort of firebase. Reason number five why T2 radar is great is that it is quite inexpensive to operate. So you should always ring your T2 radar with T1 power generators. And these four T1 power generators are going to get a power for mass efficiency boost that corresponds to a level of 15% better than T2 power generators. So this is quite impressive considering that these are T1 power generators. And the net power drain of the 4 power generator ring T2 radar is just going to be 107 power per second. So this is not as high actually, right? It feels higher if you consider that an unring T2 radar is going to be 250 power per second. But with this ring, and if you like subtract the cost of these power generators because they are part of the radar, so to speak, then it's going to be quite exp inexpensive to operate with around 100 power per second. So pretty good. And of course, if you upgrade this to Omni, then it is going to benefit from the power generator ring much more. So really no reason not to ring it every time. And that's going to be quite good. And reason number six why you should love T2 radar is... Sorry. 